Here we have Professor Birkert Koenig from University of Regensburg, uh, Germany. And Professor Koenig is a former dean and currently is working as professor at the, the Department of Chemistry and Pharmacy at the mm -hmm. University of Regensburg. While he is here for the fifth CTDDR conference at CTRI, CDRI, so we have a good opportunity to talk to him about his research. So tell me, Burkhard, uh, you are a trained organic chemist, but mm -hmm. your research focuses a lot on biology as well. Right. So what exactly motivated you for this? I don't see that there's a really difference mm -hmm. with between research in, in biology and chemistry. If you look at the, the, the origin of, of diseases or the origin of a lot of properties in biology, mm -hmm. you have to go down really to the molecules and there we are in chemistry. Yeah. So I think both areas are really well connected yeah. and have to work together. So we have to understand the molecular origin. And as a chemist, of course, you start with the molecules mm -hmm. and then you go to properties and mm -hmm. you may end up then finally mm -hmm. at uh, um, organisms, effects in biology on okay. there. But a biologist may look from the other way around, but mm -hmm. I think if both work together, that's a very good thing. Very well said, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, like your research focus is uh, developing receptors. <clears throat> for biological targets right. and in chemist for u utilizing visible light photocatalysis for organic transformations. So these are all big words. How yes. exactly mm -hmm. is this research significant for you know general public? Right. Common okay. Myanmar. Okay. Yep. So our research has a lot to do with visible light. Right. And visible light is something everybody encounters every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need it to see things, we need it to to recognize things, visible light is also very closely connected to color. And uh, so we use visible light in the context of our science for, for two applications. The one is synthetic receptors, so um, indicators, so to, to signal things that are around us. And this could be in medicinal diagnostic, but mm -hmm. also everyday life. And I okay. think everybody knows these things that yeah. It's in there, then a color lights up in a way, and we try to make these things better and uh, interesting. The other research is using the visible light to drive chemical reactions, and this is also what we all know in, in biology, that's photosynthesis. We see yeah. all the plants around that harvest light and make chemistry with this. Yeah. And this is our, our big model, and right. we try to develop this. Uh, for chemical processes. Right, yeah. and yeah, and especially given the you know uh, problem of chemical hazard and pollution and all, right. using visible light can also be a very good idea. Right, yeah, yeah and it comes for free, no? So exactly. it's every day, exactly. every morning, it comes for free, exactly, and yeah. so we should make more use more of it. More use this. of it, yeah. And okay, so um, tell me, how exactly is academic research different from industrial research, if at all it is different? Yeah. And I mean. What should be and how much should be the common ground between these two? Yeah, there is a difference. In particular, academic research is, is quite often also combined with education. Academic research is done very often at universities. And of course, there, um, the let's say the, the, the output are also educated people in a way. No? So, mm. and, and industry, of course, doesn't have this. They benefit from this and then the, the educated people go there. But when it comes to the questions that are addressed, in my personal opinion, academic um, institutions should also target the fundamental and the basic things, basic questions. Well, this is not always possible in industrial research. Yeah. But there is a big overlap in the interest. Also academic researchers will certainly be attracted by, let's say, uh, questions that are very important currently for our society and they should contribute yeah. in a way. So yeah. I think there is a good overlap and it's, it's for me it's always a pleasure to talk with people in industry. I learn a lot from, from their concerns and their uh, their questions they have on there, but on the other hand, I think um, we should use the, the little more freedom we have in academic research to also look at things that may not be directly go to a product or a solution yeah. and things. Right. Okay, so just one more question that right. what advice, because you are such an experienced researcher, so what advice would you give for young scientists who are just starting their career? Right. 
So my advice would be to to follow what you like and you're interested in. Um, I, I, sometimes I, I talk with people leaving school and they ask me then uh, what kind of education or what kind of career should I go for to get a good job later on. And that's probably not such a good idea to select yeah. what you want to do in life yeah. uh, because I see this always, y y you are good in this uh, in, in the subject or in, in, in studies that you really like. Because then it doesn't matter if the days are long or you have to have an extra effort. If you're really interested in this, you then will be also good in this subject. So um, the, the, the best selection criteria is that you really are interested in this and then everything will fall in the right place. Very true and very, very well said. And I hope that uh, I can use this advice for my career as I am just starting my career. Mm -hmm. So that was a very insightful talk to you, Burkhard. Thank you so much yeah. for sparing your valuable time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having yeah. me here.